The BYU football program is one week into training camp. How are things progressing? Well, there's no time like the present to catch up with our good friend Connor Pay. We'll talk about that. Talk about how the team is enduring the heat that is uh, around Provo. And also, we'll let you guys ask your questions of him all ahead on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day, a first view of the day as well if you're watching this on YouTube. And a big thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us right here on your original daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app today, create an account, and use the promo code Locked On College to get $20 off your first ticket purchase. Terms apply. All right, let's bring him in, a team captain for the BYU football program, a good friend of the podcast. He is Connor Pay. And Connor, I want to start off by asking you, this it has been very very hot in the state of utah of yeah. late you guys have gone through multiple practices outdoors jay hill said that the only way you guys get to uh, essentially get better when it comes to playing in the heat is to actually practice in it so how are you enduring the heat wave going? <laughs> yeah no it's been hot that's for sure especially because we're practicing in the afternoon mm-hmm. so practice starts around 3 45 or 4 every day so kind of the the peak heat uh, of the day. So, I mean, <clears throat> once you kind of get out there and once you got a sweat going a little bit and, you know, usually there's like a little bit of a breeze too. It's not, it's definitely not unbearable, but those first couple of days, it was like, whoo, it's hot out here. And then you kind of, you sort of kind of get used to it. So now uh, you've got that flow going. Anybody watching this on YouTube is seeing you grow that hair out and they, you're, if, you're, if you're watching it right now, they're seeing it flow out the back of your, your hat there. Uh, how has that gone? Has it been any different having the extra hair on top of your head? No, it actually, I thought, I thought it was going to be really hot and it ended up not even being bad. So, um, yeah, I'm grateful for that because I want to keep it. But if I was freaking dying of heat, I might've had to make a change. All right. So now that we're a, a weekish into camp, we're just past that, that, that week mark, uh, how do you feel things are progressing overall? Give me your kind of your 30,000 foot view, I guess, for the team. Where do you think things stand right now? You know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how training camp has gone so far. I think guys have come out with the right <clears throat> attitude and the right mindset, you know, and practices have been hard. They've been physical and, you know, it's been, it's been back and forth, you know, which is, which is, you know, a good thing. Obviously you want to put your best foot forward every day and, and, and win the practice, but I think I've mentioned this before. If if the defense was dominating us every single day, I'd be worried. And if we were dominating them every day, I'd also be worried. You know, it's it's been it's been good back and forth between both the offense and the defense, which which is a, is a telltale sign of a good um, a good training camp. Now, I talked with an individual who remain uh, nameless on this podcast, and they talked about that back and forth nature of this. And they've said that it's been good to see both sides of the ball getting after it. Now, we're out there when we get out there as a media core, we watch about 15 or 20 minutes of practice. So it's a snapshot of what the overall uh, period is for you guys. But one thing I've enjoyed, and I want to get your thought on this, is I heard you guys on the offense singing the BYU fight song after you guys scored a touchdown early on in training camp. Is that kind of a new addition here? as you guys celebrate those touchdowns (laughs) yeah we did we uh we didn't sing the whole fight song yeah um but yeah we scored uh yeah we scored a touchdown during a team period and then we just did the the (laughs) raw and uh and uh the very tail end of the fight song and we did it towards the defense and stuff just to piss them off you know and it's so yes that did happen that did happen one time all right. So now with regards to training camp, it is a lot of button heads with the same guys. And uh, we've just saw in the NFL, I don't know if you saw this, the Detroit Lions and I remember who they were practicing uh, with, but they got fined $200,000 for having too many fights in practice. Uh, I love it. It's kind of funny that they're actually fighting these teams for this stuff. So dumb. Just a way for the NFL to try to get some of their money back. 
well, that's also true. But uh, how do you go about that when it comes to like the the fracas? I like to call it that comes in fall camp because inevitably, guys, when it's hot it, it, and you guys are in the 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 heart of practice, things are going to happen. How do you guys handle right. that? Do, do the coaches say no fighting at all? What's the what's how do you guys handle those inevitable scraps that are going to take place? I mean, I think that's exactly what it is. You know, it's inevitable. Um, because like you said, you're, you are going against the same person for like a month straight. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you get so sick of hitting the same people, talking the same smack to people, you know, you just have to, you have to see those idiots every single day. And it's just, you know, it gets, that's why week one is so exciting. Cause it's like, Oh, I get to hit somebody different for the first time in like six weeks. And, you know, so they're all fired up about it. But I think one of the things that comes with maturing as a player, and so the, the veterans don't have a hard time with this, because, like, we talk smack and we fight a lot, you know, and it's not Kalani's favorite thing. You know, he's kind of – he he doesn't mind the physicality and, and the, um, you know, kind of button heads and maybe, you know, pushing over the edge a little bit. He'd rather have to pull us back than try to hype us up. Right, it's a that's a much better problem to have. But he doesn't like it when he doesn't like it when we make really personal comments about each other because the smack talk with your teammates can be very different because you know so much about each other and you know what buttons to press and you know what to say to really set somebody off. And so Kalani's not a huge fan of the crazy personal attacks. So we try. That's the only thing that he will actually say and be like. Hey, like, all right, like, let's not, let's not make really personal comments about people or their families or something else, because we're, we're privileged to that information in their face. But, and, and also he, he might to just waste time, <laughs> you know, he's kind of just like, all right, come on, like, can we please just move on and like get to the next play? Like we've got, we're on a schedule here, you know? So, but the vets have a really easy time, you know, that stuff stays on the field. Or it's like, I mean, I use this example because Tyler and I are talkers. We like to talk crap. You know, and like Tyler and I have said some heinous things to each other on the practice field. Like absolutely heinous. And then we'll walk right in after practice and our lockers are next to each other and we'll sit down and we'll chat like nothing happened, you know. And so it's like you have to be able to draw the line, you know, between the practice field and the locker room. When you have issues is when that kind of stuff get seeps into the locker room setting because that shouldn't be happening and so honestly we haven't had any issues in the locker room or anything this training camp everyone's kept it on the field and as long as it's kept there i see no problem with it i kind of like it to be honest i'm gonna ask you off air what you and tyler are saying to each other about to, <laughs> i'll hold that for when we're done recording but uh, I, I, see, i'm gonna we'll I was going to ask this question, but I'm going to give Matthew the same credit because it's a similar question that he had in terms of our Locked On Cougars Insider Group asking questions. I'll let okay. him because I think he answers it the right way. Uh, question for Connor here. Have any of the offensive line had pancake blocks in a training camp? How do they handle that in terms of you guys putting guys on the ground? Because I know that tackling is a bugaboo when it comes to training camp. But then uh, what aspect of the chemistry of the old line are you most excited about as well? Um. Okay, so the first part of the question, yeah, of course, all of us have. You know, all of us has had the chance to put somebody on the ground. And how do we handle it? I don't know if there's anything to handle. We're fired up about it. You know, and it's, uh, will we occasionally do some swimming on top of them or something or maybe nut drag them a little bit? Like, yes, does that happen? It happens. Are we, we're not, we're, we're trying not to do that to our teammates, right? It's a little different when it's like, it's like you already put them on the ground. That's your teammate. You don't need to do all the extra stuff. But does it happen? Yes, of course it happens. And sometimes the D line gets us too. You know, like it's a it's a two way street. Um, so yes, everyone's had a chance to. Everyone, at least in the the starting group right now, or the top six or seven, has had a chance to put somebody on the ground, which has been good. It's been a physical camp in all the right ways for us. Um, and then for the second part of the question, the chemistry. I think it's been. I think it's been good. You know, it's uh, – <clears throat> I mean, Waylon and I already have that chemistry because we played together so much last season. Um, and so, you know, kind of that left side with, uh, you know, with Caleb and, uh, when, and Waylon over there, that one's pretty – that chemistry is pretty good, you know, because we have more reps together. 
Um, and then on the right side, we've kind of been, there's a, there's a battle going on at right guard. And so that one's been a little bit different, um, you know, and also with Kaim over there. So I think once coach Woods gets to a point where he's comfortable setting the starting five, um, that's when you can kind of really start building chemistry. Cause you start to bank for like two or three weeks straight, you bank a ton of reps together. Um, and you kind of, you kind of get to feel out how certain players handle certain blocks. We're all taught the same techniques, but everyone's body's different. Things are different and, you know, timing and a lot of it's feel. Um, and so, you know, I think that, I think the chemistry with, with how much adjusting we're doing right now in the lineup and how, how much we're bouncing around, I think, it, I think it's pretty dang good for, uh, for uh, for how much change is going on from practice to practice or from period to period, and so I I think the chemistry is in a good spot, you know. And I think I think a lot of factors go into that. I think how hard we worked this off season together, and we put a ton of time in together, um, probably more than I ever have or close. And just you know, and I've mentioned before how how hard we've been pushing the group to learn the playbook and and do things like that. Like all of that helps your chemistry, because right now we, we you know we know what we're supposed to be doing, and so it's really it's really easy when you're all on the same page. Even if you don't do something exactly right or the technique could be better, you know you can alleviate a lot of issues or pains just being on the same page like that. And so that's a credit to Coach Woods and, and his system. You know, and obviously there's still, I mean, it's been, it's been, we've had six or seven practices. Obviously there's still, you know, a lot of cleaning up that we need to do, but, you know, as far as chemistry goes, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, you know? All right. Uh, I've got a couple of thoughts, uh, like thoughts or questions, I should say about uh, what I, training camp entails for you guys. Is now you kind of enter that second week and <laughs> we're kind of getting the heart of camp here. We'll delve into those momentarily as you roll on right here on Locked on Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Now, Game Time is here for you guys to get you out to whatever events you happen to be interested in, whether it's music, comedy, theater, uh, sporting events. No matter what you're into, Game Time has got the options for you guys. And obviously, during the summer months, a lot of us like to get out to the ballpark, go to MLB games. Some of you might like to go to Southern California, go to Dodger Stadium. Some of you want to go back east and see Yankee Stadium, whatever you want to go. Uh, they've got tickets for you guys with our friends at Game Time. They are an authorized ticket marketplace for Major League Baseball, which makes getting your tickets faster and easier. And prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, using your seat in their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guess we're out of buying your MLB tickets allows you to get out to the game, sit down, and enjoy uh, what you're uh, going there for originally. Two taps, your tickets are purchased. They're all available inside the app. You're not having to fumble through your email to get the barcodes when you get into the game. The best part is they have the lowest price guarantee, or they will credit you, speaking of game time, 110% of the difference. So download the game time app today. Create an account. Use the promo code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. You can take the guesswork out of your buying your MLB tickets. Once again, with our friends at game time, by downloading the app, terms apply, create the account, Redeem the promo code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. That's locked on college for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. want to remind you guys, if you've not done so already, make sure you check out our friends over the Locked On College Football Podcast after this show wraps up. Make it your second listen of the day. Spencer McLaughlin is getting you ready for an exciting season on the gridiron with discussion on the upcoming season, the ever-changing landscape of college athletics as well, including conference realignment, the transfer portal, NIL, the new college football expanded playoff, and more. Locked On College Football is available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast and it is proudly to be part. It's proud to be part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. All right. Rolling on here with Connor pay on today's edition of locked on Cougars and Connor, obviously training camp uh, this time when you enter like kind of second and third week before you make the transition uh, to game week mode, when you guys are getting ready for Southern Illinois later on in the month, uh, I've had so many people describe to me, these are the dog days, but these are important days <laughs> at well because they're where it feels like uh, the guys who are best prepared it feels like really emerge and show what they're made of yeah i think that's true because it is it's definitely a grind right it's um i guess it might be interesting for people to hear should i just walk through like the daily schedule yeah, please do yeah go ahead um i think i think it's a a lot of a lot of fans and people don't really get to see that side of it of what 
they hear training camp and like, what's this big scary thing? And so I can just walk through the schedule so you can kind of get a picture of what we do every day. And it might shed some light on why it's referred to as the dog days. But um, so basically I get up at seven every day, um, get to the facility for breakfast from 730 ish to around 8 15 8 30 so we'll have breakfast and we have weigh-ins um and so you'll you'll weigh in we weigh in every morning to see how well you recovered from the night before because we weigh in before and after practice as well to see how much weight you lost and that determines your recovery regimen for the night in terms of how many the certain drinks how much sodium you need all this stuff um so then we'll go weigh in then we'll head up and we have a team meeting um and then after the team meeting, we'll have special teams meeting and then head to position meetings. Um, and then once position meetings are done, we will um, head outside and either do a walkthrough or we'll have a lift. That, that alternates each day. Um, walkthrough one day, lift the next day. And then we'll finish that walkthrough or lift up around noon. And then uh, noon is lunch. So we'll go eat, and then we get a, a couple-hour break in the middle of the day. It's a time, chance for guys to go take naps, recover, to get ready for practice in the afternoon. We'll come back around 2.30, 3-ish, meetings start again. We'll be in meetings until about 3.30 or so. Then practice goes from 3.45 or 4 to about 6. Um, then mandatory ice tubs at the end of practice for 10 minutes or so go in, um, shower, get cleaned up, go eat dinner around 6.30 or so, 7-ish. And then and then a lot of the guys, this isn't mandatory, but a lot of the guys will go upstairs and into their meeting rooms and and, and watch the practice, you know, and, and uh, just buzz the film and, and get a look at it before so we can prepare for our meetings the next morning. Um, and so I'll typically leave the house around 7.30, or 7.15, 7.30 every day, and then I'll get home around 7.45 or 8 every night. Okay. Um, and so it's, it's 10, 12-hour days for a month straight, right? And so it's, uh, it, it can be a grind, and, and especially with the heat and the practices are ramping up, you know, we're in full pads and we're hitting, we're tackling now in, in, in certain segments. And so I think that uh, – you know, I think that's why it's kind of referred to as the dog days because putting in that many hours can stack up pretty quick and it can kind of feel a little bit like a drag. But I mean, for me, I'm, I'm a football junkie. And so I love being there and I love watching the film. I really enjoy practicing. The first week was pretty crappy for me just cause I was, uh, I was getting over some pneumonia stuff and also had a sinus infection. And so I was feeling, I was feeling pretty crappy out there on the, on the practice field, but, uh, it, uh, okay. Hold on. Hold we're on. Able to make, we were able to make it through by some miracle, but let me interject here. You joined us last week uh, on the podcast. Yeah. Did you have pneumonia and a sinus infection at that point. Yes. <laughs> I would not have been able to tell that is truly impressive you were able to kind of keep it under wraps like that. that's pre that's awesome well, it was because i was just coughing up crap all the time and just hurting my lungs i had been coughing stuff up for a few weeks and so i was like but i didn't have any other symptoms so i was like i wonder this is getting weird so i talked to the doctors like there might this might just be lingering effects of like pneumonia you just didn't know you had um and i was like i'm pretty sure i would have noticed if i had pneumonia <laughs> but um all right they were just like, well, is your, have you been hard, have a harder time breathing and chest pains a little bit? And I was like, yeah, I guess I've had those a little bit. And they're like, this might just be a mild form of pneumonia. I was like, okay. And then I started getting this burning when I was breathing uh -huh. and like the pressure in my ear, I couldn't regulate the pressure in my ears very well. Yeah. My nose was always getting clogged up and stuff. And I kind of got this itch at the very top of my throat. And so I was like, oh my gosh, like that, I knew what it was. So I went and met with the doctors and they looked down my throat and stuff. They're like, yeah, you got a sinus infection. And so it's like, <clears throat> not only was my chest hurting and I couldn't breathe and cough and hacking along, but when I would try to breathe, it burned and hurt really bad. <laughs> wow. And so I'm out there, I'm out there at practice, just trying to freaking survive, you know, getting my butt ripped by coach Woods, you know, cause I'm over there after four plays and I'm behind on a knee, like <sighs> trying to catch my breath. Cause I just couldn't breathe out there. <laughs> 
All right. So that kind of gives good. It's good. They got me some antibiotics. I'm feeling awesome now. So we're good. So we just learned about your schedule. We learned that you've been battling through, like, you know, practicing with pneumonia of all things. Like, (laughs) you got anything else we should know about, like, in terms of what's going on with you, Lovely? (laughs) Anything else? It's kind of rhetorical. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, there's nothing else. Okay. Rhetorical or not. So. Okay, so I also wanted to get your thought. Uh, now, we talked earlier about how the offense and defense, you have the back and forth going on this. And you talked about the fact that you you trash talk with guys like Tyler on the defensive line. Uh, give me your sense. I think there's some perception out there that the defensive line is going to be more of the same from a year ago because a lot of the same characters are back on that defensive front. What is your assessment of the D-line right now in training camp? Well, I think they're doing a good job. Um <clears throat> because yes, it is a lot of the same faces. Um, you know, I think that starting group will probably be fairly similar to what it was a year ago. But at the same time, they're 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 one year more mature in Coach Hill's defense and in his system. And so just kind of that knowledge and that edge allows them to play a little more freely, I think. Um, and so they've I mean, I think they've had a good training camp you know, so far, cause I know like the, the D line's gotten a lot of heat in the off season for their depth and things like that. And I think they're, they're handling it well and doing a good job. And <clears throat> so, I mean, I, I think they've been improving, you know, every day as camp's gone on. And, you know, I think the whole defense has just having a whole year to settle and spend a whole off season studying and learning that system helps a lot. Now, obviously, you guys are looking to improve as well. Uh, we've talked often on this podcast about your work with Coach Woods in the offseason. Uh, give me, I guess, just your overall assessment uh, of where things stand right now with this offensive line because I think there's a lot of expectation that it's going to be a resurgent year for you guys up front. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, first and foremost, you know, I think the edge and the attitude – and the effort and physicality that we've started camp with has been really good. I think that's been a huge positive, and and I think Coach Woods would agree with that. And he, you know, he's he's told us that because, like, obviously, you know, we're going to make mistakes here and there, screw things up as, as we're you know getting back into the swing of things and playing real football. Technique is going to have to be tightened up, right? We haven't we haven't hit people since March, mm-hmm. you know, and so hitting people with pads on is a lot different than you know doing it on air or non-padded all summer long you know and so there's a lot i mean if we're being honest it's offensive defensive lines are the one position that can't really do what they actually do on the field in the off season like you can you can work on it but it's like you're not it's not yeah you know you're not hitting it doesn't feel the same whereas like you know receivers and those guys you can go run a route the same way non-padded as you do padded you know and it's like maybe the jam at the line isn't as physical or something like that but for the most part it's the same and so I think just, you know, continuing to stack the good days with that stuff. And, but I think number, number one is just the attitude and the physicality and the energy that we've come out with. And, and Coach Woods has a saying that I love. He says, solve your problems with aggression, right, and physicality. Like if you don't know what to do, go knock the crap out of somebody. Okay. Like if you're, if you're knocking them off the ball, even if you're wrong, usually we can make something good happen with that. You know, we can, we can work with that. And so, you know, I think uh, like, obviously we got to spend the next three weeks tightening up that technique stuff and making sure that we're all good with all the defensive looks. And, you know, it's, it, it's, you can tell right now as an offensive line that we know what we're doing a lot better than we did last year. Cause yes, there's still mistakes here and there, but a lot of our mistakes have been more physical and and needing to work on like technique type stuff or maybe not using the proper technique for the scenario, not schematic issues, which was a, was a big deal for us last year. I think that just goes to show that we, we accomplished what we wanted in the summertime, you know, to, to prepare for fall camp. Solve your problems with aggression. I actually really like that. That's all. That's a fantastic phrase. And that's a good, that's a good coach Woods phrase right there. That might be the title of today's podcast. Let's just put it <laughs> nice. That'd be a good one. All right. Uh, we will finish up this edition of Lockdown Cougars with Connor Payne in just a moment. We'll get to some of your listener questions as we roll on right here on the Locked On Cougars podcast.
Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. As I mentioned, if you want to ask questions to Connor Pay, uh, we reserve that right exclusively for our Locked On Cougars Insider Group. If you'd like to sign up for that Locked On Cougars Insider Group, there's a link uh, whether you're watching and or listening to this. Uh, you can uh, click it. It's a 14-day free trial. It's uh, one-on-one conversations with myself via text message, uh, updates on BYU football, all of it. You guys got it all, and it's you can join uh, today. So hopefully you guys will do that. I've had a really nice uptick in uh, people joining up. And we're going to get to those questions right now uh, with Connor. Run out of time here on the show, Connor. So we're going to go a little bit kind of rapid fire with this. First one goes uh, goes to Jonathan Erickson. What offensive lineman has made the most strides since spring besides yourself? I'd probably have to say Caleb Etienne. And a lot of people talking about him, man. Um, I think he's playing with a lot of confidence right now. And because he has all the physical attributes you could ever want. Mm-hmm. And he's a fantastic athlete. And now that I think he feels like he understands what he's supposed to be doing and, you know, he's he's been coached really well all off season, and he's understanding the schemes, it allows him to use that physicality and p- play freely. And so I think I think Caleb's had a great camp so far. It's been impressive. Uh, and I think a lot of people are looking forward to seeing how he looks, obviously, this fall at that left tackle spot. All right, up next, Travis asks this. Uh, what does Connor expect to be different this year specifically that will make the offense more explosive and productive to improve, hopefully dramatically, upon their sub-100 rankings and a lot of the major statistical categories from last year? Well, I think we're going to be able to run the ball better. And I think that's kind of – that's what every great offense needs because so much of what we do in the pass game is predicated on our ability to run the football. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's – When you can't run the football, it's a lot easier for defenses to get into sub packages and put crazy blitzes on you and get to the quarterback and because they don't respect your run game. And, you know, it makes it a lot harder for us to protect the quarterback. And if we don't protect him well, he can't throw it, you know, and if it's uh, if they're not worried about the run, then they can play some of those deeper zone coverages where they cover a lot of the field. And, you know, it makes our route concepts a lot more challenging. You know, and so I think just being able to run the football more consistently and have that be the safety net for our offense. Like when we know we need a few chunk yards, we can put the ball on the ground and go get a few chunk yards. You know, and I think uh, that's what it needs to be. And I think that's going to be the number one thing to improve our offense. All right. Up next, Marlon asked this question for Connor. What position does he think he projects best at for the NFL? Is it center or would you be open to moving other positions if need be? I would definitely be open to it. You know, if that, if that creates more opportunities in the NFL for you, then it's a no brainer. Um, but I do think, I do think center is the position that I'm um, at least more being scouted at right now. Um, at least from what I've heard and just kind of how it feels. I think I'm viewed as a center uh, in the NFL. I, I think I'm viewed as a center with the ability to play guard, you know, yeah. not, not the other way around. Um and so, but but obviously, if if a team if a team has a need and guards what I got to do, I'm more than happy to do that. I've done it before, so <laughs> you have done that. There's no doubt. I got a little quick two parter from our friend Taylor. He says this: I asked Connor, who's the hardest person to plot to block on defense currently? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Um. Mm. They're all doing a good job right now. Okay. I would say um I guess I'm more limited to the interior, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't I'm, I don't block the DNs very much unless they're coming in on a stunt and they don't belong in the A gaps anyways and I let them know that. Mm-hmm. But um it's I would say probably John. Okay. John Nelson, John had a great off season and I think he's going to have a good year. Um and I'm trying to think if there's anybody else you know that's stood out. I think I think probably John. Okay. You know, John John's uh John's the one where it's like I know if I'm one on one with him, I gotta be on my gotta be on my P's and Q's. <laughs> All right. Uh second part of that question is there a freshman that is standing out to Connor so far on the defense? On the defense, freshman. Um I don't know if there is right now, but 
also at the same time, there's there's not a ton of uh, there's not a ton of freshmen right now playing when I'm in okay during practice. So that's a little harder for me to notice if that if that makes sense. Because sure. like when I'm back while the twos are in and stuff, I'm watching the O line trying to make sure things are going right. You know, I'm not paying attention as much to the defense. So I think that's I think I'm just not as equipped to answer that question right now. That's that's just fine. Uh, you may have kind of addressed this partially, but Tyson asked this: What does Connor di- Connor's diet look like during training camp d- versus during the actual season? You talk about you eat three meals over there at the facility, but what's it look like? Yeah, it's um, during the season and during training camp are similar. Um, training camp is a little more intensive because your your practices are longer. You're out in the heat, so I typically will lose more weight during practices or in training camp versus in the season. Cause once you get in the season, practices are shorter. It's more game prep, keep the guys healthy. Um, so I don't know if the food changes as much because I still need to get that same calorie intake every day just to maintain my weight. Um, <clears throat> and, I ask like, yeah. what's let our listeners know what, what is the caloric intake for an offensive lineman like you to maintain where you're at? Cause I'm at 6,500. Oh my calories God. a day right now. Oh my God. So that's just, that's maintenance. So that's just to maintain. Um, <laughs> yeah, sure. Dan, Dan's kind of dialed in my numbers now uh-huh. to where I know if I want to pull down a couple pounds in a healthy way, okay. then I need, I need to eat around 5,500 in a day. If I want to gain, I need to, I need to hit about 7,500 in a day. And 65 is kind of my number that Dan's come up with. That I'm able to just maintain my weight at. Okay. Um, all right. A uh, few other ones real quick. We'll go through these real quick. Yeah. Uh, has So this comes from Danny. Has Connor watched any of the Olympics? And if he has, what has he thought? And is, is, is there a favorite moment so far? Yeah, I've watched a lot of it as much as I could. Because luckily they started before training camp started for us. So I had a couple down days before we started where I had some extra time and got to watch a good amount of it. Um, <clears throat> favorite moments? Um. I mean, Simone Biles has been pretty awesome. Okay. Pretty much every event she's been in has been pretty spectacular. Um, it was fun to see how badly Katie Ledecky destroyed everybody in the 1500 meter free. That was pretty insane. Have, have you I seen think it? was like 15 seconds behind yeah. her was second place, right? You you do know that she now owns literally the top 20 times all time in that <laughs> event, right? <laughs> That's, you know, when, when people ask me about like, who do you think the most dominant athletes are of all time? Like who, who are the goats of their sports? Like when I think of like who the most dominant athletes ever in their sport are, you know, that list is like Tom Brady, Michael Phelps, Tiger Woods, and Katie Ledecky. Yeah. I Like it really, like there's, I have a hard time adding people to that, you know, and maybe Michael Jordan too, maybe Michael Jordan too, but you know, it's, but when I just think of just utter dominance of their sport, like, there might not be anybody better than Katie Ledecky at this point. All right. Uh, two other ones real quick. Uh, so one's football-related. The other one is – well, they're both football-related. Uh, let's go with yeah. Bryce's first, though. This may be too silly of a question, but who has the best singing voice on the team? Ooh. The best singing voice. Well, I'll be honest. All of the Polynesian guys can sing pretty well. I think that's just a cultural thing. They're yeah. raised that way. So you can really point at any of the polys on the team. Like if you go and mix with them or something like that, and they're, they're singing their songs together, you, I mean, there's obviously, there's always a few that suck, you know, like Waylon sucks. Like uh, I'll say that outright. We were in St. George as an offensive line a couple weekends ago and we were mixing and singing and he's terrible. Um, but the other ones are pretty awesome. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Make sure Waybone hears that. I want him to hear that. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna interview him. I love I love Wayland to death. So I gotta give him crap. <laughs> um best singing voice. I don't uh, I don't know if I could pick one. Okay. I do think it's just I do think in general the Poly guys can sing way better than all of us. I don't know what it is about Polynesians, their ability to harmonize with one another. Yeah, exactly. Is, is, and Without it's practicing. Exactly. <laughs> it, it is it's a natural <laughs> gift. It is it's crazy to me. And I trust me, Connor, my mom and my grandma were voice coaches. Like they, they, they 
teach singing lessons. I, yeah, I'm, my sister's a professional singer. You know? yeah, you, you know the skills I do. It, it's a gift. And let's put it this way. Yes. Gift did not get passed down to me. I talk on the radio versus singing. So let's just, let's just <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that there. All right. Final thing. Final word goes to Alex. Uh, he just simply asked this. Biggest surprise of camp so far. Take that however you want. All right. Biggest surprise of camp so far. Biggest surprise. What surprised me? Um, I don't want to say I'm surprised about it because I've been with him and working with him every step of the way and seeing how hard he's worked, but just how well Caleb's played, you know, just kind of from where he was at last year mentally to where he's at now is night and day different. And so, and then, you know, obviously we got to keep stacking the good days and get him all the way to game day so he can do that on the field in real games. And, but I think that and how, just how tight the quarterback battle is, Okay, you know, it's just, uh, you know, we're still 50, 50. And I don't know if, uh, I don't know if that's changing in the foreseeable future. It's I can, but I can't say I'm surprised by that either. They're both really good players. You know, with different strengths, and so that's a. I would not want to be a Rod and Kalani right now. I'll just say that that's a, they got a tough decision to make there. That's a tough one. <laughs> no doubt about that. Well, Connor, a little bit of a supersized edition, but thanks all the same for taking the time as always. Uh, we'll yeah. be catching up with you next week and uh, talk more about the quote unquote dog days. All right, <laughs> sounds good. All right, that's Connor Pay. I'm Jay Catch. Thank you so much once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen today. Thank you to all of you who we like to call everydayers as well. And until tomorrow, have a great rest of your day. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast.